These rich waters support really different habitats and wildlife. So we've got seagrass meadows with sea dragons, kelp forests teeming with fish. We've got sponge gardens with all these creatures that filter those nutrient rich waters. Port Phillip is really quite an extraordinary place when it comes to biodiversity. The animals and plants that we have here are a really good example of some of the unique things that we do find here right across the Victorian coastline and very, very accessible. I think sadly a lot of people don't understand how incredible Port Phillip Bay is in an ecosystem. I've had people tell me it's fished out, there's nothing, it's alive. And the people who know the most about the bay are the people who use it. And I think that's why it's so important we encourage people to get out, see it. The things I've seen, like literally, 100 metres from where we are, dolphins, seals on cue when I bring international visitors over. It is the most amazing place, it is alive and well, and we have to look after it. The magical things about the environment in Port Phillip is that you can go and sit on the beach with the sand dunes behind you and look out to sea and you could be anywhere in the world. And so what we've got is a, a marine and coastal environment that is still comparatively wild. Shellfish reefs were once a thriving ecosystem throughout Port Phillip Bay, in Geelong Arm, Hobson's Bay, Carrum, and many in many other parts as well. Those reefs now are largely gone, overexploited to the extent that the shellfish reef ecosystems started to collapse. In more recent years, overharvesting, catchment to coast pollution, and sedimentation plus disease have all contributed to these reefs not being able to recover. We're determined to bring back uh, the lost ecosystem, these shellfish reefs, uh, back into Port Phillip Bay uh, so that we can bring back more fish, cleaner water uh, and more life uh, back into Port Phillip Bay. We're doing this using a number of different techniques, including using limestone and recycled seafood shells to form a base which we then seed hundreds of thousands of hatchery-grown Australian flat oysters and blue mussels. So these reefs offer us a, a small window into the past. Uh, in just a short period of time, life has really returned. Uh, we've seen schools of a pinky, a baby snapper, uh, little reef fish like pygmy leather jackets and hula fish, uh, as well as uh, the sorts of invertebrates that are really important for the bottom of the food chain, like sea stars and urchins, uh, and even uh, octopus, top predators and seals. Since 2015, we've restored 1.5 hectares of shellfish reefs. This is equivalent to the size of the MCG. So it's these ecosystems that are the foundation for life. So if we're able to restore these shellfish reef ecosystems, uh, in the future they're going to be able to filter the equivalent of the entire city of Melbourne's wastewater, acting like a huge biological filter, really cleaning up the water in Port Phillip Bay. ReefWatch is a citizen science program run by the Victoria National Park Association. Uh, it's a citizen science program where we get the community out doing projects for marine science. Great Victorian Fish Count is in its 14th year. Once a year in about November, December, we get as many people out into the bay as we can to have a swim or a dive or a snorkel and tell us what they find. Citizen science helps scientists by collecting a large amount of data, often at one time. It would be really hard, if not impossible, for scientists to capture on their own. Um, the data can be really robust, um, can be across a really large scale, so something like Port Phillip Bay, and it can be used to inform all sorts of things. It can be used to monitor, say, the health of the bay, it can be used to track species abundance and distribution, um, all kinds of really interesting and inf important information for managers. A few years back, um, we had some confirmed sightings of Western Blue Groper in the bay, uh, first time in a very long time, and those sightings were instrumental in gaining its protection in Victorian waters. So the beautiful thing about the common dolphins in Port Phillip is that because it's such a small community, we recite them on a regular basis. So I jokingly call these animals my lab rats because literally what they are is a, um, a small community that we can learn a lot about, that we can actually teach other scientists across the globe about because we continue to see the same animals. Um, we see mums and calves, we see what happens with the calves and where they go. Um, so there's actually other scientists will be learning off us in terms of that knowledge. So education, I think, is a vital component as well as regulation in managing the health of the bay. And so in schools, 
You've got a new generation of people, the future stewards of places like the bay. Now, all of those creeks and rivers can carry a lot of pollution into the bay. So one of the high profile species that's found in each of those catchments is the beautiful platter. It's a mammal that lays. I think what's beautiful with education is kids are open, they're bright, they love the natural world. And for us, it's just seeding in the beauties of the species and how we're affecting the natural world and what we can do to help all these different species. A lot of people who drive past Portfolio Bay every day but never actually get out on it, they really have no concept, and I mean that not in a bad way, of just how incredible the fishery is and that a lot of the fish actually come here to spawn to continue their species. The snapper men coming here for history every single year for as long as the world can remember to lay their eggs and continue their species. So we need to look after that breeding ground and the whiting, the little flathead, they use as a nursery before they head out to the big wide world. By returning our native oysters back into the bay, Cleaner waters are going to provide us with safer places to swim. It's also going to help other ecosystems like seagrass beds recover uh, and it's going to make our bay more resilient to climate change as well. One of the most exciting things that's happened, I think, for all people who love Port Phillip is, is the State of the Bay's report. So, this, if you want to, so if you want to look and see what the state of the bay was in, in 2016, 2017, that's the place to go and check. And the, and the great thing is, it's a good news story. Um, and it's a good news story that, that, um, that I think we can take a fair degree of solace in and say thank you to a lot of great work that's been done to, to help improve the water quality in the bay. But it also means it's a jewel in our crown and it's one of the few places where we've actually got a chance to keep it as a jewel in our crown if we do the right thing. Oh, I would like to see Port Phillip Bay in the future as being such like a really, really clean bay that everyone can swim in and all the animals are happy, no animals are extinct or anything. And yeah, just, just going out on the beach and just seeing no plastic all across the beach and everything. Yeah, that would be very nice to see. <laughs>